said something on the social media earlier, a few hours to, uh, ago, that I have something to tell you before I get to bring you the program tonight. Lend me your attention, everyone, for a moment. There were stories making the rounds that I was sacked from my employment here at China's television. Are you ready for the truth, Nigerians? Well, when the whole story was going viral on social media that she of channels was sacked, man, we fell back. He said, this is the voice of the voiceless. He is only, he is one of the journalists that come and, and tell the politics to the face, to the power, what we, the masses, have in mind. So when we heard it, we were, we were feeling bad. So all these things there happening, he made a very strong appeal to the president about the the protest and everything that is going on in Nigeria, all the saga and all the issues. He made a very passionate appeal and uh, was uh, telling Mr. President to sit up. And after that, there was a controversy, a lot of rumor that has been sacked. You know, so we're going to play the video that has stated all this. After that, we'll play the aftermath. You can drop a comment in the description. We pray that this government listen to the plight of the masses, come to the rescue of the masses. Here is my final word tonight. Mr. President, Senator Bola Tunubu, it is to you tonight that I bring the burden and plight of our people too. I trust this message finds you in good health and high spirits as you continue to navigate the intricate responsibilities that come with the esteemed position you hold. It is with a heavy heart and deep concern that I pass this message on the current state of our beloved nation, Nigeria. In a time when the heartbeat of our nation is raising with fear, and the very fabric of our society is tearing at the seams. We stand at the crossroads. President Tunubu, the nation calls for your undivided attention as you embark on a private visit to France. Our beloved Nigeria is grappling with unprecedented challenges that demand urgent and decisive action. Kidnapping and abductions are the order of the day. From Lagos to Kaduna, Taraba, and violent and criminal activities have pervaded our land even in the heart of our nation's capital, the audacity of kidnappers has become a sinister reality, striking fear into the hearts of our people. Our citizens are living in constant fear, unsure of their safety and the safety of their loved ones. This is not the Nigeria we dreamed of, not the renewed hope that was promised. We applaud the gallantry of our security operatives, but indeed more work still needs to be done to keep the people safe. Efforts are being made, but it appears they are not far enough. What has become the strategies of, of the strategies of state policing and community policing that has been talked about several years? And the huge white papers and advisory notes on how to tackle insecurity in Nigeria, where are they? President Tinubu, as a pro-democracy agitator, isn't it the right time to restructure Nigeria for it to work properly? Is the Nigeria you and your friends fought for? Is it the Nigeria that you're talking about? The removal of subsidies has unleashed a tidal wave of economic downturn, leaving families struggling to make ends meet. Prices of commodities have gone through the roof. The biting effects have felt across the nation, and the loss of confidence in the government is palpable. This is not a time for complacency. It is a time for bold and wavering leadership. Mr. President, I think it is about time to get the nation's head in one room and find a lasting cure to our ailing economy. As you stand on foreign soil, Mr. President, remember the weight of your, on your, of your responsibility to the Nigerian people. Our citizens, including those who voted for you, are losing faith in the government. The implications of the loss of confidence are far-reaching. And as a leader, you cannot afford to look away. Investors are fleeing the nation like never before. Economy potential of Nigeria is being squandered, and the consequences will be felt for generations. We urge you, Mr. President, to take immediate measures to create an environment that attracts and retains investment. The clock is ticking, and our economic future is at stake. Mr. President, the time to act is now. Swift and decisive measures are needed to curb the escalating insecurity, elevate the economy burden on citizens, and restore the confidence in the government. This is not only a call to fulfill campaign promises, but a plea for the preservation of our great nation. Mr. President, our regional leadership is hanging in the balance. Some members of ECOWAS are signaling exit, and Nigeria's influence is under threat. It is time to reassert your leadership. Strengthen diplomatic ties and secure our place in the committee of nations. As journalists, we will not shy away from probing, inspiring, and holding leaders accountable. 
President Tunubu, live up to the expectations of your calling and the mandate upon which your office stands. The Nigerian people deserve more. They deserve a leader who acts with urgency, integrity, and unwavering commitment to the well-being of our great nation. The challenges may be daunting, but if you are resolute and carry the people along, we can all together overcome. The giant of Africa must now rise and take its rightful place in the Committee of Nations and unless its potentials for the Nigerian people to smile again. God bless this Federal Republic of Nigeria. And this is my final word tonight. Good night, everyone. Now this is the second video of him coming out to give a disclaimer of what really transpired and whether he sacked or not. Just listen to him. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channel Television. I'm Sean Wakimale here in Abuja and it's good to be back with you. Thank you so much. Well, I said something on the social media earlier, a few hours to, uh, ago, that I have something to tell you before I get to bring you the program tonight. Lend me your attention, everyone, for a moment. There were stories making the rounds that I was sacked from my employment here at Channel's Television. Are you ready for the truth, Nigerians? Well, that was not true. And it is far from the truth. Was I sacked? Absolutely no. Dear viewers and audience of our beloved politics today and Sunday politics and China television, viewers, wherever you may be tonight, I'm deeply touched by your concern and kind words during my absence from the screen for several weeks, which sounds unusual to some of you. Your unwavering belief in the Nigerian dream and residents in the face of challenges inspire me every day. I want to assure you that China Television as a media organization operates with the highest standards of fairness and integrity. And as much as I know in the last 12 years or so that I've joined China Television, this network has shown me that decisions regarding staff are made with great care and issues like sacking or dismissal are rare and only taken in extreme situations. Please be rest assured but my absence was not due to any form of dismissal, but rather a period of necessary personal, family reflection and growth. Your confidence in me strengthens my resolve to continue advancing the truth and providing authentic information to the public and Nigerians, wherever they may be on the globe, as guaranteed by our constitution. Well, it's one of the prof few professions in the world that is guaranteed in the constitution of Nigeria I owe that dearly, and of course, I do not take it for granted. I remain dedicated to holding the government accountable for the people's interests, especially during these tough economic and social times. Together, we will stand strong, ensuring that the voice of the Nigerian people is heard and respected. Thank you for your unwavering support and for standing by me and China's television. We remain committed to delivering news that empowers and informs our beloved nation, Nigeria, will be better for it.